Now, for those of you out there who don't know, a man named Neil Adams has been going around on the internet expounding his theory that there is a conspiracy of science and that the Earth is in fact growing through the course of geologic time. I am going to respond and rebut that theory, and I'm posting this as a reply to the longest of his YouTube videos. Mr. Adams, there is no conspiracy of science. The reason why no scientists take your theory of the growing Earth seriously is because it is ridiculous on several levels. What benefit could scientists possibly have from convincing everybody the world was not growing what it actually was? The most serious flaw in your theory is that it flagrantly violates the conservation of energy. Now, rest assured, there are several other flaws as well but I'm not going to cover them here for the sake of brevity. How much energy would an expanding Earth require? Let's calculate it. Now, in order to calculate the change in potential energy of a sphere which is changing in size, we need to know its initial radius and its final radius. Now, like many pseudoscientists, Mr. Adams, you are long on speculation and short on actual numbers. However, by watching your video, it's very clear that you think that the Earth expanded from a state where all the continents were touching, so that all the surface area of the Earth was taken up by continents, to the state where it is today. Now, you are, do a very convenient thing in your video where you uh, put in the water that stays at more or less its current sea level as the continents coalesce. The thing is, there is a lot of continental crust which is just barely below sea level today on the continental shelves and also in ribbons of continental crust out at sea like the Lord Howe Rise near New Zealand. And why you would choose to discard these pieces of continental crust is beyond me. But in any event, if we take only the portion of the continental crust which today are above water, we see that those are about a third of the Earth's surface area. And since surface area of a sphere varies with radius squared, this means that you are saying that the Earth's radius has increased from 1 over the square root of 3 times its present size to its present size. The potential energy of the Earth today is negative 2.24 times 10 to the 32 joules. Yes, potential energy is negative. If you don't understand why that's so, I can make another video later explaining it. What matters now is that you understand that what's really important isn't the value of potential energy, but the change in potential energy as you go from a small Earth to a big Earth. Because it's that change in potential energy that requires the input of some other energy source because energy is neither created nor destroyed. And it's that change, which I'll show you shortly, is positive. The potential energy of a sphere with the same mass as the Earth, but only 1 over the square root of 3 times the radius, is negative 3.87 times 10 to the 32 joules. The potential energy change as the Earth supposedly grew from 1 over the square root of 3 times its present radius to its present radius would be positive 1.63 times 10 to the 32 joules. The fact that this number is positive means that energy, a lot of energy, would have to be added to the Earth for this to happen. 
In the first half of this video, I've explained how much energy it would take for the Earth to grow from 1 over the square root of 3 times its present size to the present size. Something which, apparently, Mr. Adams didn't even realize he had to do if he was going to propose this theory. In the second half of the video, I'm going to explore the uh, possible sources of that energy and show that there isn't actually enough of it to do the task that Mr. Adams' theory requires. 